Are you ready to learn something very smart and very simple and very easy to do and at the same time very effective? It's the Capablanca formula and uh, this is what you should basically do when you only have one bishop. So let's uh, get into it. Uh, the game we're going to see is from 2003 and it was played in Berlin in some uh, German cup. Uh, I was playing for Hamburg and uh, we were playing for bronze or something. I think we won the bronze. Anyway, uh, I play e4 and this uh, b3 is uh, the fianchetto uh, Sicilian and it's not so bad. You can play this. Uh, I think maybe the best move is might be this move. It looks very weird, but uh, Peter Heine had a great uh, survey about it uh, for black and I think black is scoring very well after g6. Uh, the idea is bishop b2, knight f6 and, and e5, e6 is nothing. Um, Okay, but my opponent, Jakob Meister, uh, a strong IM at the time, I'm not sure if he became a TM, uh, played knight c6, which is a, of course a very natural move. Uh, by the way, I was inspired to use this opening by, uh, I think, uh, Gagunasvili or something, uh, some Jorgen player who kept playing this and with very good results with white and e5 and bishop b5. By the way, this is very weird. Usually you're told to uh, develop your knights before your bishop because you know where your knights are going and here I start with the bishops so no rules without exceptions um, I'm attacking uh, this pawn uh, at the moment uh, so normal move uh, d6 uh, I think maybe this move is better but um, d6 because here book this is a good move and looks weird so I'm giving up the bishop pair immediately without even being asked uh, and this is of course what bishop can do. They can almost always take knights and that's why bishops are better than knights. A little bit better. That's why bishops are better than knights because they get to choose when to exchange. Take a look at your games and see that it's in something like 80% of the time it's the bishop who has the option. So it's a little bit like a relationship where only one guy can break up or girl can break up. Okay, let's get on with it. Uh, 92. Okay, and this is uh, the Capablanca method is white will put his pawns on white because he has a black squared bishop left. And this is basically what you do in uh, with the Capablanca formula. You, you uh, exchange one bishop and then you put all the pawns on the same color as the bishop who has left the board. All the uh, pawns on the same color as the bishop who has left the board and the other bishop cannot help but being good and the pawns will take care of the white squares so you will only have good pieces and uh, Capablanca uh, was, was the, I think was the first to popularize this and it's, uh, it's a very uh, good effective met method I think a guy like Rosenthalis does this all the time okay black can see what's coming white of course wants to uh, make this bishop here good and how does he want to do that he might go this and here, but that will weaken the. Oh, I came too far. I'll just. Um, that will weaken the white squares. So what is instead? Of course, he wants to play f4, just opening the bishop and rem and having the, the the center pawns on white squares. Queen g5, attacking down here. Okay. Well, I have to defend it. Natural move is to uh, to to do this uh, and I'm actually ready for f4 and this would what I would like to do no matter what almost except for after this move because this prevents f4 uh, very effectively so instead I will have to, uh, to to do something else and of course uh, I'm not uh, gonna get made it so I will have to to just do this this was not the point of it and he goes back and d3 and notice now that white has all these pawns on white and this is the black squared bishop so he's, I'm just trying to get this make this good then the knight will become good and all my pieces will be good and uh, and of course black does have this which is his sort of triumph in this uh, position but of course it's it's only one piece and then he has the, the weaknesses here of course one central pawn more but it's also a double pawn and it might be a weakness h5 that's not a good move uh, black thinks the position is very closed and he is ready 
to attack. Uh, but White is uh, way ahead in their development, and uh, and his position is rather solid. Um, so here you just uh, say to yourself, okay, what do I wish to do? Mm -hmm. What do I wish to do? Yeah, you wish to do this. And um, attacking the, the queen, of course, it will have to go. Uh, it will have to take opening the position. And we see that, that this is now uh, really, really, really strong. And it will be very difficult to, to sort of oppose it. Okay, he could try this move, uh, but after this, uh, white is simply better. Um, taking here is a positional disaster. He will lose the EF pawn anyway, and then the, all the ideas of the white squares are gone. He will have weaknesses on the white square, so he will have weaknesses on all, all colors of the all, all pawns on the board, and, and white will go something like this. And so, so taking here is, is, is not good, so he decided, okay, enough is enough, I have to develop. Um, or rather I have to exchange something. So uh, this bishop was so strong that he would have to exchange it. And here white found another good move because uh, the, the queen just takes the bishop's place. The, the, the pressure in this diagonal is just annoying for black. So he took and pieces are coming out, and of course, due to this um, pawn structure and due to the f file and uh, better central control, white is already clearly better. Also, this pawn has gone sailing away. Uh, you should be wary of moving pawns. Black is still into the the thing of trying to become very active, and also it makes sense to have a knight here. This is where you want to have a knight uh, to just and and the thing is of course at the moment knight f3 doesn't work um, but here white can actually uh, change the nature of the game and say okay i uh, i'm 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 actually much better developed than my opponent and uh, i have some ideas here especially after this move which looks very anti-positional the thing is black cannot castle and white uh, white's knight is worse than black's bishop, so ooh, and white is using his uh, lead in development in a very, very, very good way. Um, and the problem for black is he can't castle. Uh, and and after uh, something like this, white gets the B file, and he could play something like this. But this is just very, very, very annoying for black. Uh, he will probably lose a pawn, and the rook ending is probably totally lost. So instead he played this, but this leads to a horrible uh, pawn structure, and we will see good technique on white's part. And if you remember uh, from one of the previous videos, technique equals control. Technique equals control. Okay, let's go. Take, take, take. Double rook ending. Uh, but of course, uh, white black's pawn here are a total mess. It doesn't matter if white cannot attack them. The, the problem for black is that the pawn ending is totally lost because uh, this one will go. This will go after a king comes here, right? So, um, so, so black uh, uh, <laughs> white is is threatening to get this king here, and it will turn into a Pac-Man that will eat all the pawns. Rook e3, nice move, uh, getting ready to massage uh, the, the pawns on the king side. Or take over the, the f file. Black is just hanging in here. Uh, and I'm just ready for uh, the idea behind this move. It looks slow or something, but the idea is simply to go here. So, I start the big march. And uh, of course, black should get desperate because the king will come here and uh, it's all over. And, off, and there goes uh, the neighborhood because now the rook comes in and I'm threatening to take it from behind, as you would say. Uh, rook g8, and uh, this pawn might be, uh, be an interest to, to black. Or um, 
This is another idea. And here it comes. And here uh, black is, is simply uh, losing everything. Uh, I will take the pawn, then I will take, uh, I will uh, block the other pawn, and then I will take it. And uh, and meanwhile, I will make sure no counterplay is coming, and my king will march to c4. So black decided, okay, I'll have to give it up and try to get some activity. Uh, and here I, and here of course, like I told you, technique is control. Keep control. Keep the opponent's counterplay at a minimum. You're winning, so don't allow any stupid thing to happen. How do that? Does white do that? Takes with the d pawn. So no king c5, b4, a3 takes a2 and a4, a5. Uh, this is the simplest thing. And the rook came in. And okay, we have. Uh, how many pawns can he attack? Let's see. You can attack this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, start by preventing this one from being attacked. Now it's, it's sure there's no h3 or something. So, rook e1, a4. And the idea, of course, is to go, not to take, of course, but to go here and here and get this pawn. So what do you do? Yeah, uh, so how many pawns are wide up? Um, I think he's at the moment three pawns up. They are, white's pawns are starting to look ugly as well, but uh, he's just preventing all counterplay. And uh, covering the pawn, again, I don't mind losing all the A pawns as long as I get the H pawn. He's coming in here, and just simply, Keeping everything under control. H4 is getting some sort of relief, but the pawn is strong now. Rook A1. And here, of course, a good move. And what to do? Okay, let's see. The E pawn might be hanging. Why give him a free pawn? C3 check. And Rook H2. And due to uh, this pretty simple idea uh, black resigned so this was the capablanca formula i repeat exchange one bishop put all your pawns on the same bishops on uh, the same color as the bishop who left the board and play on the other colors with the with your remaining bishop that should be strong make sure it's strong if it runs into a wall of pawns then you have done something wrong uh, thank you for watching this was gm talks uh, i hope to see you soon and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video thank you